Way over 2,000 years ago, long before the castle was built, this rocky crag was the site of an Iron Age hill fort. Here, tribal chieftains could feel secure behind its ramparts on this near unassailable perch. Since then, the landscape has changed. At that time, the dunes were not here at all. Instead, flatlands lay around the rock and were engulfed by the sea. The playing fields would have been underwater, making the crag almost an island, only attached by a thin neck of land to the north. The only way in or out was at this point, making attack a tough job. Almost as tough would be getting an army out of the fort should an enemy be marauding through the countryside beyond. Bamburgh was an isolated and lonely spot in the grip of the North Sea. Its ramparts were probably made of massive dry stone wall, typical of the area, which simply ringed the edge of the plateau. No towers broke up its severe face and only some kind of protected gateway provided any complexity. This is the remains of the hill fort on top of Homelden Hill, which is from around about the same period, and gives an eye vague idea of what these kind of ramparts would have been like. This is about 16 miles away from Bambra. The name Bambra is far later than the Iron Age fort. It was originally known as Din Gwaroi, or something like that. It's one of the worst words I've ever seen for pronouncing. Din means fort. Guaroi is something else altogether. I will spell it. It is G-U-O-A-R-O-Y. And I know I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but now's not the time to worry about that. So this is the fort of the Guaroi tribe. There's only one tiny reference to these people, just referring to them, really, and their fort, which we now call Bambra. They would have been a sub-tribe of the Votadini, the dominant group in the northeast, who occupied the region between the Tyne and Edinburgh. Our little tribe on the rock out in the North Sea, on the other hand, was far smaller. The land to their west, going inland, was a mass of bogs and pools stretching for miles. This was no landscape for expansion. Instead, the tribe's territory was probably a strip of coastline almost cut off from the rest of Northumbria. Here they could act as a breakwater to any seaborne attack, while ruling over their own patch of land with little interference from their overlords. The Roman presence nearby, at Hadrian's Wall, may have had little effect on the area. Rome's grip on the land above Hadrian's Wall was constantly slipping, so the usual pattern of hill forts being abandoned for urban settlements under Roman control is not seen this far north. Dinguaroi probably remained inhabited in some form or other throughout the Roman period and on into the post-Roman future, when the site would grow into the royal centre of the mighty kingdom of Northumbria. So in later films, we'll hear a bit more about that. Nah, it's a bit Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs>